Welcome to the Endless Honeymoon Podcast, Natasha edition. I'm merely your co-host, and I'm here with our star, our special guest, Natasha Legero. Thank you. Natasha, thank you for joining us. You know, it's so great to be here. I'm really excited. I actually wanted to come on your podcast, thank you. our podcast, and, produ- and uh, promote my new show, that's coming out. It's called A Rat in the Kitchen. Yes. And it's on, on TBS. TBS. And I co-host it with... Me, right? No. It's me? No. With an amazing I'm Michelin star chef. Me? Chef Ludo Lefebvre. And guess what, Moshe? What? He's on the podcast today with his charming wife, Chrissy Lefebvre, who also helps him with his business and is uh, an amazing woman herself. Let me get this straight. Yes. You're starring in a brand new show on TBS that premieres on the 31st of this month. It's a cooking show competition with a Michelin-starred chef that has an element of mystery and an element of cooking in it and an element of comedy? Oui, oui. That sounds like something I and all of the listeners of this podcast should want to watch. I'm very excited. Me too. Should we just bring him in? Let's let's talk to him. We're, we actually, we're going to talk to both Ludo and his wife, Chrissy. We're going to get some food advice, some relationship advice. They've yes. been married longer than us. Their kids are older than us. Yes. Maybe they could help us a little bit. Perhaps, if nothing else, they'll teach us how to make a beurre blanc. <laughs> Who's over here? That's her husband. Oh, okay. I didn't know. I didn't Ludo's like, who else is on this? <laughs> He's like, who is that? <laughs> and, 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 and Ludo, who's that sitting next to you? <laughs> Wait, can we see them? Oh, Hello. there we go. Look at this beautiful couple. Ludo, I'm her husband. I'm the other man in her life. <laughs> oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah. Chrissy, you look amazing. Ludo, I've already seen you like for five hours today uh, on oh, Zoom. Well, yeah. Exhausted. <laughs> yeah, I, I was going to call our mutual dear friend Brett Friedman to get him over, but you know, he was okay, busy good. Out for last night. Does she know him? Yeah, she knows Brett. I'll, I'll go, go, go. All right. So, Ludo, Chrissy. What's yes. uh, Chrissy? I got a question for you. As the forgotten spouse of a star of uh, of Rat in the Kitchen, like me, <laughs> yes. I think you and I can really relate to one another. <laughs> I have a really important question. First off, you married a Frenchman. Were you surprised the first time he kissed you when you were like, "Whoa!" So, so this is what they talk about when they say French kissing. <laughs> Wow, that's, that's, <laughs> was about the show. Yeah, that's what the show is about. Yeah, this is the show, Ludo. <laughs> buckle up, <laughs> sharpen your knives, and buckle up. Ludo, <laughs> you can just tell him to be quiet, Chrissy. You don't have to answer his questions. We can we can talk about the the plot of Rat in the Kitchen if you prefer, Ludo. No, so I just just surprising. <laughs> he was like, "What is this?" <laughs> Ludo's was like, "What is this show about?" I'm like, yeah. "They're really funny." I gave him no no warnings. So Ludo, it's less. It's going to be less. Um, weird than a morning radio that you guys have been doing all morning it's well, more thank you it's not difficult more personal it's not difficult because i do all the talking about all the complicated yeah. things I know. okay <laughs> chrissy no. chrissy wait we just did one and they were like what what have you been watching and ludo's like i don't watch tv i don't watch movies i'm busy i'm gonna be honest <laughs> All right. Will you-, you watch YouTube videos, SS Sniper Wolf, your daily right. dose of internet. Oh my God. Does he what? Chrissy, does he what? Moshe is always watching people arguing about masks. That's does kind the- of my, my genre. That's my oh, oeuvre. The, the Karens? Yes. I love a Karen. <laughs> he loves the Karen genre of internet videos. Love a Karen video. Ludo, of all the Michelin starred chefs in the world, who is your biggest enemy? Which one do you hate the most? <laughs> you don't have to answer that question. Um, all right. Ludo loves me. This is good. Okay. Oh, great. I mean, I love it when you do the answer for me. I like that. I like that. It's a really tough interview for Ludo. Let me ask you a question now. You don't have to answer it. Well, so, uh, I usually answer for him. So, Well, let me just explain, too. I know Chrissy's listened to the podcast, but this is kind of an advice podcast. People, we have guests on, couples on. Sometimes they'll tell us how they met. Um, they'll, do you guys want to maybe tell us how you met? I know Ludo, you told me that you oh, knew. Oh no, not the story. Yes, we're okay. telling the story. Oh no. We're telling the story. <laughs> would oh, you rather oh. answer, Ludo, would you rather answer like, the who, which like chef do you hate get, question? <laughs> I like to get his perspective of my side of the story. So I was on a date at L'Orangerie, which was this super fancy French restaurant. Um, And it was the gentleman's birthday and I liked him, but he was not like, anyway. You were on a date. I I was on a date. 
I walked in and Ludo was standing at the major D stand and I saw him and it was love at first sight. And now I like had to figure out how to get through this dinner and be respectful for the gentleman that I was with. And the guy that took me had never been to really a fancy restaurant either. Um, he was a surfer dude lawyer, but was trying to impress me with a fancy restaurant. And so they sent out the Emma's Bush compliments of the chef guy says, well, I wonder why we got this. And I was like, oh, the chef thinks I'm cute because he didn't know either. So in my mind, Ludo sent out the amuse-bouche for me, compliments of the chef, because not only did I fall in love at first sight, but he fell in love at first sight. And then the whole night he keeps coming out to a table that was, you know, sort of catty corner to us and sneaking a peek at me all night long. And I was like, you need to just stop, go in. I understand. You love me. I love you. We're all good. This is going to happen. I love and this. Did you and literally say that? Did you literally? With her eyes. Oh, with your eyes. And her mind. Mentally. I got you. All happening. So then at the end of the night, I didn't want to order dessert because I wanted to leave um, because I was uncomfortable and my husband was in the room, but I just hadn't met him yet. So he sent out the petite force compliments of the chef. So I thought it was his personal send off love letter to me, even though I, you know, come later to learn that every table gets an amuse <laughs> <laughs> and as yeah. Ludo says, it's a good thing you moved to Hollywood. You do movies in your head. <laughs> Ludo, why do you not like this story? It's amazing. It's you a very cute story. I, I had a similar. Oh, it's like you this morning when you tell any all the time the same story, same story, same story, same story. No, but it's, it's, very... it's new to our oh. listeners. And I have a similar story. I fell in love with Wolfgang Puck one time at Spago. <laughs> and then at the end of the meal, I just realized, wow, I misread this whole thing. <laughs> this was just incorrect. Wow. Come on, Ludo. Get, we need a laugh. He's, he's gonna... <laughs> no, no, it's funny. It's funny. That's what I'm saying. Wow. You, with Bogum Puck. Yeah. No, that's what like when you play a comedy club in, in Paris. That, the, the audience <laughs> yeah. goes, wow. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, tell us about the show. Okay. Natasha, Ludo, tell us about yeah, the show. Natasha, can you say one more thing about the show? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so Ludo and I are hosting a show on TBS yes. called Rat in the Kitchen. And basically, it's a cooking competition. Uh, where a group of chefs, some are home chefs, some are professional chefs, and they're all trying to impress Ludo. They all know about him. They're like obsessed with him. They can't wait for Ludo. They think this is like their big break. They think the amuse bouche is for them as well. Exactly. Well, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. That's what for her. And so basically, they they go through a bunch of rounds. But what the twist is that there is a rat in the kitchen, which means there is someone there to sabotage the rest of the chefs. And sometimes the rat wins and the food is disgusting and Ludo yeah. treats it like he treats one of your jokes, Moshe. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. That's a bad dish. <laughs> P.U. <laughs> oh, wow. Bad dish, guys. <laughs> and then sometimes the dishes are amazing and then that means the team wins the money. So, and so Ludo and I, and I get to kind of just make fun while Ludo very seriously judges the food. So it's kind of like, um, what's the Bobby Flay show? What's that one called? Ah ouais, well, you're right. Uh, uh, yeah, you have a show now called uh, what, Bobby what, Play. Whatever. Bobby Play? Top. Well, let's say it's like Top Chef. You're not supposed to say what show it's like. Yeah. It's like no other show it's that's like ever no other, been out. I'm about to give the comp. It's like Top Chef meets Knives Out with comedy. Okay, I like that. How about that? How about that? Right, but, right. but you don't even know if right. Top Chef is the right reference. You know what? I'm trying my best over here. Um, Natasha, did we have some, we had some questions. Okay, so for, we for posted couple, right? that you guys were going to be on and we have uh, a lot of questions. And by the way, we can cut anything out. So just let me know. Whatever. None of my jokes get cut out, by the way. I have, that's in my contract. <laughs> So their fans are asking us questions. Okay. So, yeah, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just okay. in English. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, and you can pass anything. All right. So here's a question. Is a relationship doomed if you don't eat the same? No. I don't eat salad. I'm allergic to mustard. <laughs> Wait, you're allergic to mustard? Was yeah. that hard for you to find out, Ludo, when she said she was yeah, allergic to mustard? Yeah, because I'm from Burgundy. That's where I grew up with mustard. Yeah. <laughs> mustard. I'm from Burgundy. That's where we do the mustard. Yeah. We grew up with that. We give massage with that. I mean, it's <laughs> like There is no Dijon scrub on my back from Wait, Ludo. you do oh, mustard massages? That is, a, that is a beautiful image of a, <laughs> a Burgundy mustard massage. <laughs> Burgundy massage, man. <laughs> Well, I mean, I, I have to say, like, Moshe has a very annoying diet. He won't eat certain seafood. 
food, um, you know, but I still eat seafood. The only thing I don't eat is pork. Well, let me say we ate at your restaurant, Ludo, and it was... Uh, oh, you're right. It you're was right. a... It thank, was you a uh, thank you for having... I would say it's a t- it was a 10 out of 10. That Whatever you made, there was a burr rouge that you made. I was red, telling him about that it. That shit blew yeah, my yeah. mind. I mean, you know... In the in the streets of Oakland, growing up, we never we almost never cooked a beau rouge, almost never. Oh, so this was a first for me. And the crab, yeah. ca- well, what else did you eat though? I mean, it was like we had the we had the uh, the the beets with a horseradish creme. Oh my yeah, god! C'est ça, les amandes, c'est ça. Oh, uh-huh. we, we had the trout almondine, right? Right. I, I think yeah, one of almondine. Ludo's what Ludo's so good at too. Some of these dishes are classics, but it was like. The beet salad was the best beet salad yep. we had ever had. And mm-hmm. like the crab cake was the best crab cake you've ever had. So Okay, so here's a question. What is the sexiest meal that you can cook for your partner? What's a sexy meal? I would do like a... I mean, for my partner, she loves steak au poivre. She loves spicy food, like steak au poivre, you know? Your creamy and flaming. Creamy, spicy. <laughs> Something on fire. Sexy. Something on fire. Mm-hmm. Something on fire. Except with, for when Ludo sets his hair on fire making it. For me, this has that wait, has that happened before? Yeah, yes. one time, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on live. <laughs> on live? We did we were doing an Instagram live and I'm in there with the camera and he lights it and the flambe and his hair starts singeing and in true producer fashion, I cannot blink. And I'm like on his hair and I have to just get the scissors. Yeah, it happens sometimes. I know you can't put it out too quickly because you know that it's going to get some clicks, right? You know it's yeah, going to get like. Yeah, I mean, just don't put your head on top of the pen. That's it. You know? <laughs> That's classic advice. Um, okay, for, wait. For Natasha and I, our sexiest meal, I sometimes will uh, prepare her a bucket of mustard and we'll just eat it straight out of the bucket with spoons and just it's very burgundy very beautiful burgundy French. style yeah. yeah I agree with you that's the way we uh, yeah we we treat our girl in burgundy <laughs> I'm not treated like a burgundian clearly All right. yeah right <laughs> yeah. okay so someone wants to know specifically and I I'm a big fan of this person, but I, I don't know. Maybe you did work with him and I don't know about this. Um, they say, hopefully I don't bring up bad memories, but do you have any tips on the late, great Jonathan Gold? Any tips that he gave you? Did he give you tips or maybe any chefs that have given you some tips? Yeah. What's the best advice you've heard as a chef over the years? Yeah. Use more butter. You- <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. Uh, I don't know if you give me. I mean, I don't know. You write so much about us. Yeah. You know, I, don't, I mean, Jonathan Gold was amazing food writer and really support me all my career and always be on my side. And uh, did he give me any tips? Um, well, what about when you were a young chef? What was some of the best advice that you got from the masters you learned from? Just to be you, I would say, you know, just cook the, f- the food you feel, you know, just to be you, don't be somebody else. And mm-hmm. to and to be you take long time. It take me 40 years to be myself. Natasha, when she's being her, she's making dry toast. Oh, really? oh okay. Oh, yeah. That's for you. So there, there, there's that. Well, I mean, Moshe does the cooking, but you know, I entertain you. I'm, I, I have other Right. She, Ludo, gifts. she really was impressed with my cooking until she partnered up with you and sort of... <laughs> oh, the, really? No, because she always, <laughs> took, uh, she always took very well about your cooking. Well, thanks. To me. It doesn't so compare. Okay. It doesn't compare to your cooking. Chrissy, do you cook? For the kids. <laughs> I'm not there. <laughs> do lunch box for the kids yeah <laughs> hey, let me let's talk about who's lasagna are the children gonna remember in life oh lasagna okay okay they love your lasagna it's yes. true yeah it's true. whose uh meat sauce do they like they like your meat sauce yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> she buys she buys the sauce already made yeah but i cook the meat and add the lowry's pepper yeah garlic great. Salt that's to it. it i mean that's great uh, <laughs> that. actually chrissy maybe we should ask you are there any tips that you've learned from ludo i'm sure like somehow you've you've got i mean i i feel like i learned a few tips from him he do you know he oh, you probably know this he was like testing the oil just by sticking his finger in a hot pan <laughs> yeah. um, it's funny because Ludo's never taught me anything, which people are like, oh my God, don't you guys have these romantic nights in the kitchen, like some movie, oh, and he's yeah. like stirring behind oh, yeah. my back. Like, like, you, know, you remember the movies, Nine Weeks and a Half? Sure. Chocolade, <laughs> yeah, stuff like that. Kitchen, guys. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't really happen. In front of the fridge and the stove. <laughs> um, but I, I've watched him for so long, and we've I've produced so many videos. Like, I've just learned by watching. And when I actually came up 
on a hundred years ago with French chef wife on my Twitter handle. It's because I was making chocolate chip cookies. And instead of like, I used to get a rock and a Ziploc bag full of nuts and just crush them up. I pulled out a knife and started chopping the nuts. And it was, I was like, oh my God, I've just turned into it. I like literally turned into a French chef wife. It's so Wait, insane. hold on. Well, first of all, we should mention you are also the producer. This is kind of a family business. You produce a family all affair. a family affair. But wait, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. you you used to chop the nuts by throwing By a- rock? <laughs> is that an American thing? I've never heard of that before. <laughs> you put them in a Ziploc bag and then you get, a you know, like a river pebble from the front. <laughs> what? <laughs> What are, you, what are you a poet? <laughs> you get a river pop. I've never, I've never heard that, but I love it. It's so poetic really? and beautiful. Yeah. Moshe hates nuts in chocolate chip cookies, though. So he's he and I it's, are always. It's beautiful. my mustard, Chrissy. It's your mustard. Yeah. Oh, no. your mustard? I'll yeah. Get. Chocolate chip cookies with nuts and raisins and M and M's and a little oatmeal is so good. That sounds okay to me. Colorado, we call it cowboy cookies. Oh, Colorado. That's why you're going to get river pebbles. <laughs> I understand now. <laughs> Hey, Tosh. Yeah, Mosh. You know what I've been thinking a lot about lately? What's that? Hey, you've got classic PT. What's that? Perky tits. How do you do it? <laughs> well, I started wearing bras again. Oh, well, that is amazing. I started wearing our sponsor's bras. Yeah? What are they? They're called Third Love. You know what? It's actually the only bra I have. And do you like it? I love it. And I took their quiz and I didn't even know I'm a half size. You're a half, you have a half size? Yeah. That's awesome. I'm an A and a half. Oh, yeah? I'm like a full, full A. You're like a, more than a full I'm A. I'm like almost a B. You're 8.5. Well, <laughs> if you want to know exactly what size your tatties are, go ahead and go on to Third Love's <laughs> website and take their Fit Finder quiz. It's easy and they will make a bra that is perfect for you. Is it comfortable, Natasha? It's so comfortable and I also love their 24-7 classic t-shirt bra. It's their number one bra for a reason. It offers unparalleled comfort thanks to every unique detail in it. It's fit, it's style, it's function, it's design. It's loved and worn by millions of women, including me, and it doesn't pinch or dig. You won't want to take it off the moment you walk in the door. One other cool thing that this company does is that they're the largest donor of undergarments in the U.S. They partner with organizations across the country and third love has donated over 40 million dollars worth of bras to people in need so they do good work and they make a good product you should get a third love bra and you'll love your fit it's guaranteed if not exchanges and returns are free for 60 days yeah so upgrade your bra today and get 20 percent off your first order at thirdlove.com slash honeymoon feeling is believing give your what did you call them Titas. No, you call them something. Totties. Totties. Malones. Totties. The 24th. Zoingas. <laughs> the 24th. Mamos, comfort and support balls, that those that they melons. deserve. Okay, come on. That's 20% off at thirdlove.com slash honeymoon. That's 20% off at thirdlove.com slash honeymoon. Hey, Tosh. Yeah, Mosh. You know what I find annoying? What? You. Just kidding. I think you're perfect. What I find annoying is when I have a medical need and I call a doctor's office and they're like, yeah, we can see you a week from next Tuesday. And I'm like, but I want the doctor now. How do I find somebody? Well, I found this website and it's honestly, I use it every time I ever need to see the doctor now because you can find somebody instantly. It's called ZocDoc and you just go onto their website, you punch in what kind of doctor you need and it'll tell you all of the doctors, their ratings and their distance from you and you can make an appointment that moment and go see them that day or the next day. It's awesome. ZocDoc is a free app that shows you doctors who are patient reviewed, take your insurance and are available when you need them. Yep. I use this service. I am constantly having STI flare-ups, and I need to go see the doctors. I would say every other week I have an issue. All right, Moshe is kidding, but I will say I had a few issues, and ZocDoc was amazing, especially during the pandemic, especially since I didn't want to drive across town, especially since I wanted another opinion, and I already had all the information that I needed from the other doctor, and then just getting the other opinion. Yes. And then I went in, went in and saw him for the second visit, but it was so great. And it's one of my doctors now, and I would recommend him to anyone. Absolutely. This is a product we, we absolutely used before they became a sponsor of the show. So you know we love them. Go to ZocDoc.com slash honeymoon and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then start your search for a top rated doctor today. And a lot of these appointments are available within 24 hours. That's ZocDoc.com slash honeymoon. ZocDoc.com slash honeymoon. 
here's a question um how do i cook my boyfriend a breakup dinner so we uh, we talked about the sexiest di- dinner what's a good menu for a breakup wow 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 <laughs> I mean, just serve the food raw, like what we eat with <laughs> Natasha on the show. Do a chicken and serve the chicken raw. Uh, That's I, it. I, I mean, raw food. Yeah, give, give, him, give him E. coli on the way out the door. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Give a little uh-huh. food poisoning and food poisoning. it's done. Try, trying to wow your your lover that you want to break up with that's just rude you shouldn't be cooking them a last meal right this is a, well an e coli meal would be good here's <laughs> this is good uh ludo as a master chef um this person's asking what's the best way to cook for one how does someone have quality if they're alone and so like w- what's a good a good strategy for cooking by yourself just for yourself wow to cook by yourself uh I mean, to cook yourself is a good thing. You have time to cook for yourself. Uh, you can cook whatever you want, but uh, it's kind of hard, isn't it? To, to- hard. I mean, I, I mean, I was single before Chrissy. Of course, I cooked for myself a little bit, you know. But it was very simple food and quick. Yeah, you, you know? know what was in his refrigerator when I met him? Mm. Tell us. Wolfgang Puck frozen pizza. And pizza. He's back. He's back. My lover. Oh, that's, my, that's my great love. Oh, Wolfgang. <laughs> the barbecue chicken pizza was so good. Uh, we'll always, I love that. We'll always have Spago. Uh. <laughs> yeah, Spago, my God. Yeah, Spago. Yeah, the but, first time he was going to cook for me, we had to go down to pavilions in West Hollywood because he did not have a pan in his house. And we literally bought like a fry pan so he could make me the steak au pas for our first meal. I have nothing in my kitchen when I was single. Nothing. nothing. I was go out every night. Ludo, you're so unique. Like I remember when we were in Atlanta, he only wanted to go to the Thai restaurant across the street. Remember, I remember, oh my God, you're right. We went so many times over there. And I'm like, this is a world-renowned chef, and he's not a foodie. He's he's just. And then he said, I don't, I don't want to get inspired by their food, by anyone else's food. And I thought that yes. was so interesting. It scared me to be inspired by it because I don't want to copy other people. And sometimes you go to other chef restaurant, you love a dish, so you want to cook that because you like it. Sometimes I'm scared of that to replicate a dish from another chef mm. because I love it so much. It's oh. kind of like comedy in a way. Like sometimes right. you don't yeah. want to be influenced. You don't, to, you don't want to copy somebody, you know? That's right. And and then the other thing that I remember about Ludo is he said that because he had this amazing dish at Twamek, um, and it he said it was white chocolate mashed potatoes with eel. And I was like, mm, mm. Yum, yum, yum. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, how? How did you know that those would match? And he said it, it was in a dream. You dreamed yeah, about white yeah. chocolate, mashed potatoes, and eel, and it worked? Guys, I was thinking, I mean, I, I swear to gosh, I was thinking the white chocolate mashed potatoes was a Russian thing. Ah, interesting. Was, it does sound vaguely Russian. Thinking they do that in Russia. Hmm. Wow. And you they, know what I mean? And I, I try it. And I try it. I try it as a restaurant, you know, to put no butter, but white chocolate in the mashed potato. And it was tasting so good. It was very good. <laughs> so with that, we need something salty. And what's very salty is the hill are very salty. Then after we need acidity, we had green apple, you know, and the dish came Ooh, alive. It's sounding good to me. It's sounding real good. It's not kosher, Ludo, but it is sounding good to me. Yeah. I have a question. Speaking of uh, celebrity chefs, which now, now Ludo, whether you like it or not, you are one he already was one honey he is no one. but now you're a tv celebrity chef it's he already whole- was one this is like- i made it in hollywood yeah <laughs> natasha's <laughs> elevated him yeah where <laughs> natasha translated everything for me on the show if you have to eat at the restaurant both of you there's a question for both of you of another tv chef okay guy fieri um, Gordon Ramsay, Julia Child, uh, she's back. Yeah. Um, she's back. And Martha she's back. Stewart, but she doesn't Martha, have a restaurant. <laughs> Martha Stewart. Uh, Wolfgang Puck-ish, no? I don't know. Anyway, what's Who? up? Mario, Mario Batali. Whose restaurant are you eating at? Um, what would be my favorite? I mean, for me, it would be because I do a lot of TV show with him. It would be Gordon Ramsay. Because he's a gentleman, he's so nice. He's and gentle. He seems so mean. I know it's all. I an know, act. but when you know him for real, guys, it's surprising so how he's nice. so a gentleman. He was a three-star mission chef. He was the his guys know Woolia to cook? I mean, I, when I was a young kid, I was following him this restaurant Aubergine in London. Uh, yes, I'm a big fan. I'm gonna run We're we're big fans too. 
We don't know him, but we're huge Gordon Ramsay fans. We really are. We watched we watched all of all I of mean, his I'm shows. I'm obsessed. And Natasha is, I would say, attracted to him in a <laughs> in a not funny way. Know, he says the truth. I love the way I love the way he expresses himself, you know, on TV. It's amazing, you know. I tried talk after she's expressed her attraction to Gordon Ramsay, I tried talking to her. And? Like like how he talks to the chefs. It did not work at all. I was like, what is no, this no, shit? Yeah. It's raw. It's raw. Get this shit out of raw. my face. And she just didn't like Get it at all. Get out of my kitchen. Get out of my kitchen. I was attracted to him in spite of his hairstyle. He's cute. I mean, he's a cute He's a cute fella. I will say he's a cute fella. All right, Todd. Yeah. So I, I, I want to ask you guys, I wanted to ask you guys a question because like we're new parents and Chrissy, I follow you on Instagram you seem like an amazing mom. You you do the things that I always say I'm never going to do, which is drive my kids around. Like, I feel like you're always like traveling. You know, your kids are on on different teams and you're you just seem so dedicated. Ludo, you too. You're always coming with like yeah. you guys are great parents. Um, we're new parents. We're trying. Um, but some people had some parenting questions. Could could I throw something? Yeah, out throw it. One, thing I, one thing I would say, guys, yes. about parenting. Make sure your kid don't do ice hockey because you have no light. Interesting. That is a very... no light. What a specific bit of advice that I didn't see coming. Because you wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning to play ice hockey. hockey. It's just a training. It's just insane, guys. Insane. I don't see... I don't see our kid playing ice hockey, to be honest. She's Natasha's daughter, so she's miniature. And I just feel like she'd get thrown around the rink. Okay, but don't do that. That's yeah, but right. she can skate between the the big ones. Later. Oh yeah, that's right. You can be <laughs> like the seeker in in uh in Quidditch. But I have to say, I mean, having them involved in some kind of sport or something that they're so dedicated to, it's like I prefer that, right? Doesn't that keep them off drugs and keep yeah, them from I'm like a, having I'm sex? One hundred percent. My, I, I don't care what sport they play. It's like keep them off drugs. Yeah. It's like the kids get bored. They have nothing to do and they're off smoking something or snorting something. Of it's course. Like, I'd rather sit my ass in an ice rink and freeze six days a week. Well, here's the thing. You got to hope that they're go- that they're not too. If that's your goal, they can't yeah. get too good at the sport because when you get too good at the sport, the drugs come back. <laughs> if they're at the top rank, oh, uh, really? then they start doing steroids and stuff like that. And you don't want that either. <laughs> Speaking right, of makes sense. I'll speaking, agree with you. speaking of Russian treats, you got white chocolate mashed potatoes and steroids. You have to be you have to find a balance. <laughs> find a balance. No, our, our we're raising them exactly. Our friends have told us that, and it seems pretty obvious. I mean, we just watched that Biggie Smalls documentary. The kids are just like hanging out on the. You don't want your kids after school hanging out on the porch on a stoop. No, on a stoop. No, no one, stoop hangs. Wondering what they're gonna do next. It's sell crack. That's okay. that's what happens. Right. No, I'm yeah, just sure, saying it's sure. important to do a sport. I'm sure. I don't think your yeah, kids yeah. are going to sell crack with or without ice hockey, to, to be honest. But ice hockey, guys, is very, very hard. When you go at <laughs> five o'clock in the morning, it's cold in the rink. Oh, my God. You have no coffee in the rink. Oh, my God. Would you guys be upset if your kids became teenagers and started rebelling by only eating like um, hungry like hungry man dinners or or hamburger helper they're like rebelling against you ludo they're like no dad all i want is denny's that's what i want to eat i'm a denny's man stop trying to force your boar rouge on me what are you talking about that's what they already do but we went to dinner we were in aspen last week and we went to this nice restaurant cash catch or cache cache i don't know and luca ordered a huge bowl of rice and a huge plate of mashed potatoes and mixed it together. Oh. <laughs> oh, Did you guys cry? Don't tell you my son, okay? <laughs> when I was a little kid, we grew up very poor. And once a year on my birthday, my mom would let me do whatever I wanted. And I all, all I ever said is I wanted to eat at a at a fancy restaurant. So when oh, I was a, as a so little cool. kid, she would take me out to like... We ate at like Oliveto, which was a really uh, 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 a great restaurant in Oakland uh, that was uh-huh. connected to Chez Panisse. And we ate at Chez Panisse and we ate at this place, Chef You must Paul. not have been that poor if your mom took you to Chez Panisse. All I'm saying is once a year, that's what that was the gift that she gave me. So I was I could have been I could have made you proud. <laughs> well, that's one of the things I, I loved about you. You were very sophisticated. You, you, you're definitely a foodie and a food snob and you kind of know your way around most food. Well, that's when I, I mean, 
when I ate at Trois in the Valley, I was like, oh, this, yeah. this is... At my level. Well, it's not just at my level. It's like, this is French... I mean, obviously, French food is delicious, but it was like, yeah, it's just what you're saying. It was classic, but it felt completely different and new, which was kind of... It's a yeah. very, it feels like a difficult needle to thread. Yeah, I mean, You know a lot about food. Yeah, I agree with you. Definitely. Yeah. You're right. Okay, so some people called in and asked some questions. So Okay, what you got? I got one. Hold here. Okay. I'm a single woman approaching 40 with a bunch of frozen eggs. Uh, I'm smart and successful and I'm still looking for love, but dating in my city with men my age is challenging and I want a child. When do I decide to do it myself? I have the eggs and the money, but I still want love. When do I just find a sperm donor and do it alone? It's kind of a hard question. Are you supposed to answer that? Yes, Ludo. (laughs) You must answer it. Or the... (laughs) <laughs> the, wow. fate, the fate of I rat mean, in the kitchen lies in your hands right now. <laughs> wow. I mean, this what I'm supposed to say. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a- <laughs> well, I, I, I'll start because I have a little bit of advice. And then, Chrissy, maybe you can chime in because we're women. And, you know, I, I, I feel like, you know, it, it is hard because I, I never had the feeling that I wanted to have kids no matter what. So I think knowing that you are a parent who thinks that I can do this alone, that's the first step. Because I was like, I was what my therapist called a situational breeder. I had my eggs ready, but if the right situation came along, Moshe, they, they, I would... They call me the situation. <laughs> I, would, I would defrost them. But, you know, I did not want to do it alone. But I think if you have the desire to do it alone, it's such a magical thing. And, and children make your life so much better that I, I don't know, I, I would say you should just do it if you're feeling it and then worry about love after. Would you agree, Chrissy? 1000%. I wouldn't, I mean, she's going to sit around, who knows when she's going to find the magical love. Mm-hmm. I would go out and either find like the hottest guy, you know, check his IQ, ask him to give you a little mm-hmm. donation, mm-hmm. Go search all the sperm banks. I mean, go, go search for the perfect genetic component that you'd like with your eggs because you might not find that your your perfect love might not be your perfect genetic donor oh mm. fascinating so, that's yeah. so true so i would say why well, you have the freedom go find your perfect genetic donor and then you'll find somebody who'll want to join in that path with you well that's i agree that's the thing that a lot of people who are thinking about um I have people in my life that are also thinking about doing this thing, this journey alone, and they're worried about this uh, love p- p- part of it. But what they don't understand, I feel like they often miss, is there are there are people out there that could fall in love with you that are also single parents. Like it's not like it, you. Yes, you've made yourself a more specific dating partner, but you haven't made yourself out of the game. You've just now the people that will be attracted to you are people who like the fact that you have a kid. You're not out. You're in a different. You're in a different stream of the river that the nut crushing pebble comes from you know what i mean like so i think yes i think if i were to compare i mean listen i love you natasha you're the best and you you're a huge like change in my life was when i met you but what you say well yeah no no this is gonna be good i think it's gonna be good ludo i don't know i don't know but 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 if i had to have a kid without love i think it would be worth it i think that the amount of love that i received from this kid was such a life altering experience that I wouldn't want to do it without you, but I would. But now, knowing now what I know, I would. I would do it by myself. I would be willing to sacrifice theoretical dates in order to have the relationship I have with my kid. Mm-hmm. Well, Natasha, don't you think though, men who have kids, like single dads, are probably more responsible, better partners than if you are looking for a wild young single guy. So that's, that's smart my- too. Totally. Yes. And and I think that the people who are really scoring right now are all these like <laughs> conscious uncoupling people because they only have to deal with their kids three days a week and then they get like a four day vacation. And then, you know, there's there's just so many different ways that people yeah. can have kids now. And I think because of this new technology of women being able to freeze their eggs, which I was able to do. And I think that now it's like everyone's thinking of it in a little bit of a different way. And by the way, this is the straight up golden age of finding hot single dads. You're going to have this whole wave, the whole wave of COVID divorces. You're going to have the, the pick of the litter. Like there's going to be so many people ready out there. So now's the time for this person. You think? Yeah. Yes. So many, so many marriages are dissolving right now. 
<laughs> Moshe and I, uh, yeah, we've 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 been through it. COVID was hard, but um, oh yeah, well, COVID was hard too for us. It, it, you know, we're we're back. Yeah, was it oh, nice? You know what I forgot, Natasha? What? On the question this morning, you know, when they asked me what my favorite TV. What is it? The Little House in the Prairie. I watched the whole season. <laughs> I watched the little. I watched the whole season with my kid during COVID. The whole, oh, that's the whole a, series. The whole series. All three hundred episodes we watched. Everything, the guys. Every nice. night we watched Little House in the Prairie. But I that's love that your kid. So, how old are your kids? Ten. Ten. So Look, our, that's nice. I want to watch The Little House on the Prairie. It was with our kid. so good, you guys. It was so good, guys. And Sorry. I, I watched it as a kid, and like the the actual life situations that they deal with between alcoholism and abuse and miscarriage and rape and death and there were two different quarantine episodes which wow. when I was a kid I would have never like oh didn't but most, think about it, it was they did crazy. not freeze in their eggs they didn't freeze eggs, <laughs> they didn't freeze eggs <laughs> no they would freeze their eggs but they would do it down in the river they, they would just well, ah, <laughs> the, one the river rocks but they would freeze the girl you know they would freeze the people in the Olsen's ice basement oh they would put corpses in the ice basement <laughs> oh yeah little house yeah. on the prairie true classic that's a true classic michael landon i cried when michael landon died because I, I used to watch highway to heaven that was that, i don't know why I cried. well that that's actually such a good tip because you know i love the lo-fi nature of little house on the prairie and just like the slowness and i also remember loving it as a child but watching yeah. that during quarantine i mean you hear about all these kids addicted to video games now and twitch and yeah. you know you guys kind of did it right getting them into that like old episodic tv from the 80s that's basically like an abacus or like <laughs> <laughs> it's a modern day abacus <laughs> it, it ran out and we couldn't find another one and then they got addicted to the twitch and the game. oh there, yeah, there you go <laughs> But that's the thing. As long, the longer you can prolong it, right? We, right. Had nine, we had nine months of Little House on the Prairie, and then we had to fall into Roblox and Fortnite. Okay, yeah. so the show is Rat in the Kitchen. It's on TBS. It premieres on March the thirty first. It's a it's a combination of a master chef, a master comedian, and a mystery. It's the three M's. Uh, it, I've seen the show. It's hilarious. It's fun. It's interesting. If you like cooking shows, if you like comedy, if you like weird mystery, uh, it's just great. Um, and I I cannot tell our listeners enough how much they should watch this show. Mostly because it pays our mortgage. <laughs> Oh. And yours. Private school over here, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just hoping for season two. I said, he's like, I hope it's really good so we can get some deals. I'm like, no, I hope it gets picked up so we get free health insurance for another year. I love it. <laughs> good bad guys. Yeah, I love that. And then yeah. Chrissy, will we see you Wednesday at at I the restaurant? Wednesday. You coming too, Moose? I'm coming? coming. Absolutely. I'm. A, I'm he's very not going to turn down another no, petit I'm a, trois meal. I'm excited. And if you live in Los Angeles, if you live in the Los Angeles area, you have to you have to eat at this restaurant. Uh, and how there's many two restaurants? Locations. You have two, yeah, one in Hollywood, one in the Valley, and a new restaurant, but no one can get a reservation in Denver called Shea Maggie. In Denver, Shea oh, Maggie, yeah. oh, this is good. This is good. Uh, thank you. Thank you guys for joining us today. Really, really appreciate it. Merci. You guys didn't make him uncomfortable at all. I'm so sad. We did. I, I think I did. I think <laughs> my, little bit with, uh, yeah, little the opening bit question, the there was no question that Ludo wasn't sure about me for about 15 minutes of this interview. <laughs> Who's that guy sitting next to her? I know. He asked me. Well, was but uh, I don't see him very well. You don't see him very well. I know. You're, it's not Here I am. Okay. Well, we'll all meet on Wednesday. I can't wait. Okay, and we'll see you guys. Excited. Until Wednesday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. Have a great day. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Hey, Tosh. Yeah, Mosh. I know you rail against technology often, but there are a lot of things about technology that's making life even better. And one of those ways is by reducing our stress using Noom. With Noom Mood, you'll take the journey to mental wellness one step at a time. Their guided approach teaches you the power of shifting your mindset in just a few minutes a day. Yeah, it's basically an app and it helps you with reducing your stress and reducing your mental anguish. It's actually a really nice experience. There's a team of dedicated coaches that will give you a support system to help you on your journey. And it helps you understand your moods and also help you start changing how you approach stressful situations, which is something I'm working on right now. Yeah, and you can do it in only 10 minutes a day whenever and wherever you need to do it you are stronger than your stress it does not get to control you so equip yourself with the knowledge and the skills to steer yourself toward happiness and sometimes it's important to provide 
different tools. They, they, they provide a variety of tools and techniques that you can try out and discover what works best for you because everyone doesn't, you, you know, you and I decompress in very different ways. Right. I throw down sick, fat techno beats <laughs> and you read French poetry. Worry less and feel happier. Sign up for your free trial at Noom.com slash honeymoon. That's N-O-O-M dot com slash honeymoon. Try Noom today. Natasha, uh, that was your co-host. I'm so excited for you. I'm so excited for this show. But what I'm, I'll tell you, I'm more excited about something else that's upcoming in our lives. And what is that? Uh, My actually, new accent? I do, I do think it's a little racist that you always do his accent. What do you think it's racist? You don't think it's offensive a little bit? No. What if it's he, how I speak French, French. So if you were doing a if you were doing a, a show with a, a Chinese um, oh, chef, would you do the same thing? If my twenty three and me said thirty percent Chinese, no, you still wouldn't do it. Okay, well, I am part French. Okay, oh, is that right? Yes, a, I, a large part, more than I'm Italian. My dad was wrong. No, no, no. These, you the twenty three and me said so little Italian. No, and it, no, no. What you 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 were twenty five percent Italian. And 25% Sardinian, which is just Italian that eats sardines. <laughs> so you are half Italian. And but I was I was more French than I thought. Like it was like 20% and it wasn't. It, I always knew you were French. <sighs> By the way, you make love. Honestly, it makes sense that I'm French because I have excellent taste. Yeah, well, there you go. And I do wonder where it came from. Uh, well, I mean, it must be from genetics. Uh, we've talked a lot about genetics today on the episode and... Uh, for a long time, Natasha, you want to hear a transition? This is going to be a transition. You're going to love it. Hit me. For a long time, before you took that 23 and Me, your genetics were a secret to you. And you know what else is a secret? What? Our, our, our secrets. Oh, look, do you? are you trying to say you want to hear some secrets? That's exactly what I'm trying to say. Let's hear some secrets. Hello. Um, so my secret is I was dating this guy who used to to look at dating apps right in front of me when we were together, like just swiping on girls. And um, one time he passed out and I took his phone and got into his dating apps and swiped left on every single person in his Tinder app and his Bumble app so that uh, he could not do it himself or swipe right on them. And it made me feel really good. So there's my secret. I feel like I'm behind in swiping knowledge. Swipe left means I'm not interested. Okay. And I just want to tell this woman that that was the right choice. Like that's the most mature way to deal with somebody you're dating using dating apps in front of you is to get into the app and swipe left on all of the people. Don't that is what so you, rude. What you don't want to do is have a conversation with the person you're dating saying, I'm a little bit uncomfortable that you're using dating apps. I want to date you exclusively. <laughs> don't do that. Get in the tech, get rid of those women, and that will then the problem will solve itself. Okay, let's hear another one. Hey guys. My secret is um me and my boyfriend used to work together at a restaurant and we had sex in the laundry room on the washer after clothes nobody was there and my other secret is sometimes when I can't poop I turn the bathtub on while I'm on the toilet and it helps me go Okay, bye. I love you guys. You know what? That woman, I bet, told her coworker the thing about the bathtub pooping, and that's probably what got him so turned on that he had to take her in the laundry room. What was the What was the thing? She, sometimes she has to. She, if she can't shit, she turns the bathtub on and it allows the poo poo to flow. Okay. Not for you. That secret, not for you. Have you ever had sex with a person in an inappropriate place? Um, I oh yeah, I fuck everywhere. Oh, graveyards. Really? You fuck in the graveyard for real? Yeah. Dang, where else? Well, you know when you were like just discovering sex, you were like, let's have sex everywhere. I've never been into that ever. It's not my thing. So tell me more. I know. We where, usually where have sex in our bed. Where where else would you like to have sex? Let me know. You want to have sex at Twa? In the laundry room? <laughs> I mean, I like the idea of these people having sex in the laundry room. I think that's cute. All right, Natasha, you're clearly uncomfortable. Let's play another secret. Hey, Tosh. Hey, Mosh. Um, I have a secret. 
Uh, I don't know why I did this. I guess I was just a curious person. But when I was about 20, 21, um, I used to work at a veterinary office, and I was always the first one there. I was in at 6 in the morning, and nobody else would come in probably till like, 8 in the morning. So I was the opener. Um, one day, <laughs> one day I was alone and bored, and my 20 horny year old self went to the bathroom, did my thing, and then I thought, hey, there's microscopes here. I wonder. So <laughs> I went out into the lab. I got a little glass slide. I got a little bit of my sperm and I put it on this glass slide and I went and I looked at it under a microscope and I saw my sperm uh, moving around. I don't know why I did that, um, but I thought it was really cool. I guess I'm just a curious person. I don't know if that's gross or not. I, of course, they sanitized everything after. Um, but yeah, that's my secret. Love so you guys. Would, he jerked off? Yeah. So he, did he kind of want an excuse to jerk off at work? He was just horny and, you know, when I was 20, I would jerk off where I've, everywhere. Work, I definitely jerked off at work in the bathroom, you know. But this guy just happened to have scientific equipment. And he was like, he went straight from horny to curious, <laughs> which I like. I think it's kind of cool. I've never seen my sperm swimming around. Let's see your little kids in there. Just like bo- little Bobby and little, little, little Tara Sue. They should have kids do that in science class in Jerk high school. Jerk off and then look at their own sperm? I don't know. It might be interesting to them to, to look Natasha, at they should not do that. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? That's I was not... never interested in science, so I was just thinking maybe that would be a way to make it. No, no, no. That's a terrible and disturbing and illegal idea. <laughs> Let's quickly hear another secret. Hi, Natasha. Hi. Natasha. Hi. Love Hi. you. Long time listener, first time caller. Um, okay, so my secret, I have been like a huge crush of this one dude since I was like 13. He was like the first dude that I ever saw play drums like live, right? So it was like I fell in love with him immediately. Like, I don't know, I think I was like 13. So you know how they say that when you... um experience those kind of things when you're young it's kind of like a trigger for like what makes you horny (laughs) so anyhow um fast forward to like i don't know fucking 20 30 fucking some odd years later we have like these sex chats over um facebook messenger which is just (laughs) so white trash but anyway, it, it 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 gets so intense. It's like really hot. Like he gets off, I get off. Like just on like texting. Like that's not normal. That's totally not normal. He lives like 900 miles away now and he's also married with children. So I feel like a total fucking douchebag, but in the same way I think that I'm helping because, you know, he he's going through these fantasies over um, text message and not actually I'm, – I'm, I'm hoping that he's not actually acting them out in real life. You know what I mean? So, like, I think that I'm helping. Oh, God, I feel like such a douchebag. Um, anyway, that's, that's my secret. Is that cheating, Mosh? A great question. I was going to ask you that. What do you think? I I mean, well, the fact that they used to know each other and uh, that they know each other and they have a re- they had a relationship, that seems like che- it seems like cheating either way, to be you honest. You think it's cheating? Just straight up cheating? Here's what I think is not cheating. Watching porn. Thank you. <laughs> I don't cheat on you most nights. <laughs> but I don't know if you were DMing a girl that you used to be turned on by when you were 15 that and doing it a lot. Especially through the unbelievable white trash cliche trope of uh, Facebook uh, of cyber sex over Facebook. I mean, everybody, that's what people say when they say white trash. You think like, what do you think? You think trailer parks. You think like hot rod cars, <laughs> cars up on blocks. You think cyber sex over Facebook messenger. You know, those are the classics, right? Mullets cyber sex that's just what white trash does um natasha i don't think it's not i this is what i would say about that 
it's not not cheating, but I don't know if it's cheating. Mm. I wouldn't say it's cheating. Like, for example, if I knew a woman or a man for that matter who discovered their partner was having an, a, a sexual affair with someone and they were like, I'm leaving them, I would go, you know, I get it. But if I knew someone who was like, he's, she's been having a cyber sex with a high school girlfriend, I'm leaving them, I would say, don't you think you can work through this? Mm. It feels more like you could work through it. What do you think? Um, what if you discovered I was having cyber sex with someone? I think we would start doing that. I get three days with the kid. You get four days. Oh, immediate divorce. <laughs> Okay, so you so it's cheating then for you. Well, it just feels very dishonest. Well, here's how you know it's dishonest. If would you be okay? Why don't you just tell me? Or I don't know. Would you be somebody weird if I found said that. it? I heard that somebody once said that uh, anything you wouldn't tell your partner about is cheating. I don't know if I believe that, but I thought it was an interesting point. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I would I would maybe try to, to try to stop doing that. What's the closest that? you've ever come to cheating on me? Okay, if you have a secret you'd like to leave for us, you know what? Go ahead. Give us a call. Leave us a hip-hop secret. 213. 222-8608. Yeah, if you'd like to be on the podcast getting advice from us, uh, endlesshoneymoonpod at gmail.com is the email to contact our producer. And you can find us on Apple, apple apple.co slash endlesshoneymoon. Leave us a five-star and a review. Look at us on YouTube. All these episodes are available on YouTube. That's my preferred way no to doubt. watch. By the way, come wa- watch Natasha's show, Rat in the Kitchen, TBS. Uh, it premieres March the 31st. Come see us live as Natasha sends a text message on video <laughs> d- showing her disdain for the end of our own podcast. Come see us live. Uh, we'll be in Austin at the Moon Tower Festival. I will be in the Philadelphia Helium Club performing the weekend after Moon Tower, which is April 13th, 14th, and then I'll be in Philly the 23rd, 24th, 25th. I'm coming to Moon Tower. Yeah, you are. Okay, good. I'm saying come see us live. And Natasha? Yes? As your show is about to premiere, I'm reminded of one thing and one thing only. And what's that? I love you. <gasps> Je t'aime.